So we're going to begin the disassembly process and what that's going to entail is uh, making sure the power is off, it's fully disconnected from the power. And we're going to remove all these plastic guards. Um, to remove them, just use a flat screwdriver. The thinner the point, the better. You're going to want to get up underneath the corner and pry off the guard, just like that. And you're going to do that over and over again until you have all of them pried off. So next thing we're going to want to do is remove all six of these Phillips screws. And we're going to go ahead and remove them. And then when you remove them, you're going to want to make sure that you keep these plastic pieces. There are some very tiny plastic pieces. There's one. And they basically go right here. And you want to just make sure that you keep all of those together. It's going to remove all six of those. We're going to put them to the side. Uh, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove all of these little, tiny little Phillips screws from the perimeter. And once you remove it, um, what will happen is it will automatically come off. And um, what this will do is, what this actually does is it holds the net in place on the inside. So we're going to do that to all of these, uh, all of these screws here. And once we've done that, uh, we'll come right back and we'll continue on working on it. So once we've removed all of those tabs, what we're going to do is we're going to lift this uh, metal covering. And what this does is it protects the electrical components for the two sensors and for the speaker. So at this point, if you're having issues with your speaker not working, well, thank you very much, my little helper. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check this connector here. This connector is the one that connects directly from the, uh, from the circuit board to the speaker. And nine times out of ten, if your speaker's not working, it's because this connector has gone bad. So keep an eye out for this uh, connector. If you're having issues with your speaker not working, you might want to replace it. Sometimes the connector goes bad or these, uh, these uh, the cables that go into the connector that have the shrink wrapping on them uh, lose the weld uh, or, the, or the solder uh, joint. So you want to make sure to check that if you're having issues with your speaker. But if you're not and you're using this tutorial um, to uh, take apart your SNU for a cleaning process or if you're using it uh, to fix the motor or a bearing issue, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut all of these zip ties. One, two, three zip ties. And what that's going to do is going to release both the left and the right sensor, and it's going to release the cable for the speaker. Um, and what that's going to allow us to do is lift up the sled and allow us to get to more to the internals. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut all of them. I already cut two out of the three. So there's the third one making sure you're not actually cutting a, a wire but you're cutting the zip tie so we're going to go ahead and remove the zip ties and once we remove the zip ties um, we're going to release the, the um, cables by sliding them underneath this tab here as you can see here it's a little hard but once you release it they'll they'll go just like this okay we're going to do exactly the same thing to the other side and then once you've released them, you want to make sure that... Yes, thank you. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you uh, grab the tabs here and you slowly remove the, the harness. Just like that. It takes a little bit of patience, so just make sure to be patient with it and don't pull from the cable. You're pulling from the, from the actual connector um, because you don't want to damage the cables because it's a very tedious process to resolder these. Um, so there we go. I'm going to continue that to all three. Okay, so now that we removed all of the connectors, what we're going to want to do is slowly lift up the snoo while guiding the connectors through these channels. Now there's two different types of snoos. The older type of snoos have this, um, have this safety uh, screw on here. And what you want to do first is go ahead and get your screwdriver, push it down and with some force, pushing it down and twisting it. And what that will do is it will take off the safety connector. It basically looks uh, something like this. So as you can imagine, um, as you twist down, it locks. And as you untwist, it unlocks. Um, the newer snoos won't have this. So if you don't see this, don't worry about it. So we're going to go ahead and start lifting up the snoo, making sure we're passing the, the wires down through the feed. And what that's going to do is going to give it access to the motor. So... So at this point, um, we're gonna do is we're gonna inspect all the O-rings. So I've received this new because it's not rocking. 
So just by opening, I can already tell this O-ring right here is ripped. This O-ring over here is ripped and this O-ring is completely missing. So we can already tell that that's a problem and that's the reason why this probably isn't rocking smoothly. We can also see that the motor here um, has a little bit of wear and the reason why I can tell is because if I run my finger across it, I can see all of this black, I can see all of this, this black debris here. Um, you see that black debris there? That tells me that there's been a lot of wear on the O-rings of the motor. Oh, excuse me, sir. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and replace the O-rings on here just to make sure that uh, we don't have any issues with them later. Okay, so now that we've identified the problem, to remove these type of uh, bearings, all you have to do is really just kind of displace it a little bit gently with a screwdriver and then pull it out. And as you can see here, I've now gone ahead and I've removed the bearing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this O-ring here. I'm gonna use my measuring calipers to measure the diameter, um, the inner diameter and outer diameter of this O-ring. And I'm gonna order some replacement parts. I'll make sure to link these on um, on the YouTube video below under the under the description. And I'll also link uh, the O-rings for the motor over here. Um, I do have to uh, fully disclose that there is several different sizes. So what we'll go ahead and do is uh, I'll link the different sizes and if you want, you can buy them. They're super cheap, they're like $10. You can buy both sizes and return the ones that don't work for you. So if you want to replace the O-rings on the motor shaft, we'll be using is an O-ring pick if you have it. If you don't, I actually have this tool to uh, pick the vinyl from a Cricut. Um, and if not, you can just use a, a screwdriver, an ice pick, something basically that's sharp. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going to the O-ring and we're going to be taking it off just like that. And uh, there's two different types of O-rings. Uh, the older ones have a bigger O-ring. As you can see, this is the older one, which is what this one is. The newer ones have a smaller O-ring with, uh, with a smaller inner diameter, but a bigger, uh, both the same outer diameter. And what that does is it makes a thicker O-ring, as you can see. So we'll remove uh, all three of these. Once you get the first one off, the two are actually pretty easy to do by hand, uh, just by sliding it off the shaft there. If not, then these are actually pretty kicked on there, so I'm going to use the, the, the pick. There's the other one, and then here's the last one. And uh, take this opportunity to, to uh, go ahead and clean this area with a brush. As you can see here, this, is, this has a whole bunch of O-ring um, shreds that have already been ripped off. So we're going to clean that really quick with a brush, and then what we'll do is we'll replace all three O-rings by sliding them back over. And that would basically conclude the repair uh, for replacing the O-rings on the shaft. Um, and, um, and you would put everything right back the same way that you took it out. Okay, I do have to apologize. Unfortunately, I lost a little bit of audio on this clip, so I'm going to do a quick voiceover. Uh, what I'm going to explain here is how to properly align these brown brackets. It's very easy. A lot of people, unfortunately, overthink this, this part. But the brackets themselves tell you exactly how uh, they need to go. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna look at the center uh, center circle of the brackets and you're gonna wanna align it to uh, this circle on this new base. So you see that circle there? We're gonna align it to the circle of the center circle of the bracket. Once you align it there, um, you can see it through the top uh, into the bottom. Um, that's it. That's how easy it is. Um, the next part um, that is gonna come up next uh, it requires a little bit of further aligning, but that should be pretty straightforward. As long as you first start off with having those two brackets there, um, then uh, you should be good moving forward. So we're gonna line up. Speaker side is always opposite to where the motor is. So speaker side over here. And um, we're gonna lay it on one, we're gonna lay it down just like that. Careful not to mess with those brown brackets. And we're gonna slide the cables through, which is gonna be one of the left hand sensors cables. They're gonna come in through here. And then we're gonna have uh, the right hand sensor plus the speaker cable. We're all gonna go through here. 
just like that. Once these two are aligned, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop the sled right to the center. Okay, now, you're, now what you need to do next is really easy. Now you have to align the sled to the center of the other piece. So once it's pushed down all the way, to do that, you're going to look through here. Right in through here. Okay, and there's two knobs, two little nubs that are coming out. One right there and one right there. All we have to do is make sure that those are centered to that one, that one's centered to that one, this one's centered to this one, and this one's centered to this one. Once that's centered, then we're good to go. Everything's gonna line up fine in the next step. This particular model has the, uh, has the, the this, this center pen, so I'm gonna drop it in there. We're gonna apply firmly a little bit of pressure and twist to the right, just one half turn, and that's gonna lock in its place. We're going to go ahead and grab the speaker wire, re-engage that cable, you know, being extra careful not to damage the contacts, just like that. We're gonna do the same thing to the right side, sensor cable, and we're gonna put it through its little cable holder there. Exactly the same thing to the left side. Cable. Put it through its holder right there. I, if it moves on you just like how it just did with me, don't, it's no big deal. Um, just go ahead and go back to realign those circles right here. Like I mentioned, that's centered. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and you're going to grab your metal piece. And, um, you know, place it over. Now let's see, this is, this is the protector for the speaker. So I'm going to grab it and I'll put it over just like that. Put this one just like that. I'm going to get the center one for this side. I'm going to drop it right there. Center one for this side. I'm going to drop it right there. I'm going to get my screwdriver. I'm going to press it in for about five seconds. Same thing here for about five seconds. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the other two sides. I don't want to fully tighten it yet. I just want to just get it somewhat tightened. Now you know that you got it right because you'll see these stick out a little bit more. Um, this one's going to stick out too much, so I probably need to screw it in a little bit more. You see now the screw is starting to lift up. That means that we were able to engage that center. That center one. So I'm going to do the next one over. The next one over. And do these over here. And once I've gotten them all hand tight, uh, somewhat hand tightened, then I'm going to go back with my drill. Back to that same level 5 that we left it on. To make sure we don't over torque it. And obviously, we're just using a, a traditional screwdriver. That's fine too. Just go ahead and just tighten it up to where you start feeling um, a moderate amount of resistance, and and you're not kind of over tightening or feel as if you know you're you're tightening too much. Okay, those are all done. That was very easy. Um, the the next piece of the puzzle is we're going to go ahead and we're going to reinsert the the mesh uh the last piece of the mesh and that's fairly easy uh, especially if uh you went ahead and you removed the brackets it removed the brackets was you know fairly easy from that point if you didn't uh it's still easy but just it's a little bit uh, a little bit more resistance so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the center right over here I'm gonna do the same thing. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our, our screwdriver, we're gonna get it, we're gonna put it right here. We're gonna open this up, put it right here, 
and then we're gonna use this to press down. So I'm gonna press down mostly with my finger and then when I'm ready to get that last part, I'm gonna use a screwdriver. Push it down so that engages. Uh, like I said before, uh, keeping into consideration that this mesh is gonna be a lot more firmer than it was before. So it's gonna be a lot more resistance than when you took it off. Uh, so you're gonna get it, you're gonna push it in just like that. I'm gonna do it all the way around. There you go. Now we're all done. Uh, that was fairly, uh, fairly simple. Um, the last piece of the puzzle is obviously putting in the clips. Um, I haven't uh, cleaned my clips yet, uh, but I'll go ahead and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. We're gonna grab our clips here. We're gonna grab them just like this and just simply just push them down. Easy. If for some reason they're not pressing down, um, then it's most likely you don't have this correctly on. So go ahead and remove it and push it back in if you're having any issues with them not engaging. But you do it all the way around and you are done. Fairly easy. It's uh, probably a lot easier than people, uh, uh, a lot easier than people think. Um, so like for instance, this one here wasn't going down correctly, so I'm just gonna push it down a little bit, make sure that this is all aligned, that this is in there just like that, and I can go ahead and push it in. Now it goes in. All right, uh, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Um, take a look at all the links. I have everything that I use linked at the bottom below. Uh, if you found this information useful, feel free to donate to um, our YouTube page via the. Uh, link below. It helps us create more and more content for more DIY videos. I don't charge for any repairs. I've been doing this for a long time, helping people fix their snooze. Um, I'm in the Southern California area, so if someone ever has any issues, you guys can always DM me, send me a message. Uh, I'm on Reddit uh, as well. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to message. I hope that this really helped you guys out.